Okay. All right. Um, yeah. All right. So this is the podcast that has not yet been named. Yeah. That's. Uh, uh, is I don't is, know. Do you have any suggestions? Fuck it. No, I have. I have no ideas. I'm also sick. Going into this so this is absolutely perfect for a a, a starter what? teaser episode. I'm sick. Yeah. No, I'm not doing best myself. I had to take an Advil earlier. Oh yeah. Uh Okay. But uh so what what have what have we got planned, Sam? Well, I I've got some I got some articles I looked up earlier from the tops of Google and also IMDb. Okay. And then uh I want to talk to you about this really weird sort of universe based in a slow, snow globe thing. That's like all over the internet. It's a big piece of history I don't think you've heard before. Okay. All right. I'm open to new ideas. Uh, So this is... Can we just call it the podcast podcast for now, I guess? Uh, Yeah, sure. Until I make a graphic for it, I guess. All right. So let's, let's see what I found here. The headline is, This Indian character symbol can crash your iPhone. What? That Dexter, are you with me? I I am. I am very I'm very confused. What? Okay, well let's read through this. There's okay. a new iOS bug that can crash your iPhone. A All symbol right. in the Indian language known as Telugu, I wanna say, can wreak havoc over the software. Oh oh my god. To... I see, when you said Indian character, I I thought it was like an emoji or something. You just thought it was some brown guy named Raj crashing. Yeah, it's just because you know they have all those fucking like uh, different skin color emojis now because they're being more inclusive. So it goes on to say that like iOS 11 has trouble rendering the symbol. Now uh, they've got a picture of the symbol here, and I d- I don't even know how to explain it. Okay. It looks like. Okay, so imagine like a sports whistle, right? Right. Now imagine that attached to a sideways S. And the sideways S is attached to a sideways 3. Okay. And then below it is a not completed heart. And attached to the heart is an upside down T. But it's a very small upside down T. And it's a capital T. Alright. Okay. The irony of all this? Uh huh. The Indi- this, this Indian sign that's crashing all the phones? Yeah. It's the Telugu word for sign. <laughs> So iOS 11 cannot do the Telugu sign for sign. It says here the apps that try to do this will freeze and shut down. PC okay. Mag tried the bug on an iPad by sending a messages loaded with the Telugu symbol. Mayhem ensued. The iPad immediately crashed when the messages were received. It immediately crashed. Like Yes. just instant it was instantaneous it was just like oh well that fuck guy pat oh shit it's gone now it's off it's crashed it's fucking can't got gotta restart it it gets dumb. more ridiculous it gets more ridiculous okay making matters worse is how other apps like you who like yahoo mail can constantly trigger the bug when ios goes idle that's because the apps will persistently try to display emails carrying the Telugu symbol as a notification. Are you serious? Yes! The app is going to continue crashing because it's trying to send messages that you got this email. Oh my god. So, wait, the, the, uh, the sign that crashes it, is that the sign for like the notification on Yahoo Mail? Is that why? Well, no, when when Yahoo Mail tries to send you a notification that says, like, you have this email that just got sent to you, if it's got the symbol in it, it's oh. going to cause the phone to crash. Okay, I see. All right. I th- I thought for some reason, like, that was, like, the, the notification symbol. And I was like, why the fuck would they have a notification symbol that crashes your phone? Could you imagine if every time you got a text your phone crashed. I wouldn't want that at all. Okay, here's one that kind of cracks me up because it's just so odd. Okay. Okay, 
Do you know RuPaul's Drag Race? Yes, I've heard of it. I have a, a friend who's seen it. I haven't seen it myself. Okay, so apparently the producers of the show are trying to find a way to... What is it? Yeah, they're trying to sue a guy who is apparently giving away spoilers from the show on Facebook and Twitter. Actually, Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> when asked to explain the spoilers in a Reddit discussion, Reality TV Leaks, who's the account that's spoiling the show, answered, I'll be here every Thursday with bomb leaks to keep you quenched until the episode, lol. I don't I don't know I ain't got no words. I don't know what's more absurd. The the guy uh like who's just leaking the spoilers as they come out. The fact that he's leaking spoilers for RuPaul's drag race or the fact that they're trying to sue the dude for leaking spoilers. Yeah, like I don't understand how that's copyright infringement necessarily. I don't know like, either. It, it's discussion yeah i don't know wow that, there's like an entire suit listed on here it's like 22 pages my god are you fucking si- that's ridiculous. oh my god <laughs> fucking... okay, here's another one okay all right here's another one about stuff that i don't care about but it's still pretty funny okay all right so you know the oscars and how they're probably gonna suck this year right uh i i don't why, wait no i don't know about this tell me about this why are the Oscars well, going to suck Well, you've got Jimmy Kimmel year? hosting. Okay. Which, yeah, you've already lost me. Uh, well, I mean, you've got Get Out nominated for Best Picture. Oh, that's true. And just Have you watched the Oscars recently? No, because no they pacing. always suck. It's so slow. It's ridiculous. They couldn't even announce Best Picture properly last year. That was ridiculous. Okay, anyways, going to back to this article. Oh, okay. The Film Academy has announced that they are no longer going to use paper for Oscar nomination ballots. Are they going to use Canadian money? No, like, they're going <laughs> to use it electronically. Oh. Oscar voting. It's the year 2018, and Oscar voting is still being done by hand as opposed to on the computer. Oh, my fucking God. Man, that organization is run by old people. Jesus Christ. Christmas, what the hell? They they yeah. don't do digital ba- oh my god. Get with the times, folks. Yeah. This one this one might actually interest you. I feel like we can have a nice long conversation about this one. Okay. I'm excited. So McDonald's is updating their Happy Meal menu. Uh, why did you think I would like this? <laughs> I didn't say you were going to like this. Okay, okay fair. This would make for a good conversation. All right, okay. So now McDonald's is officially getting rid of chocolate milk by June 2018. What the fuck? <laughs> Why? Yeah, I, I can kind of understand. It's got a high sugar content. But at I'm, the same okay. time, juice is like probably worse for you. Juice is actually worse than soda in uh, many it, cases. It, it depends on the juice. That. It depends on the juice. If you have like a nice like portion of Happy Planet... Or something like that. That's that's pretty fucking healthy. That's basically yeah. But you smoothie. really think McDonald's is getting Healthy Planet for the rest? <laughs> no, of it's McDonald's. All of their shit is gonna be unhealthy, no matter what it is. Their apple slices are probably unhealthy. I yeah, don't. No, that's that's right. <laughs> You're not wrong on that one. <laughs> don't don't ask me how they're unhealthy. I just know they are, because it's fucking McDonald's. Okay, but here's the kicker, and one that I I just seriously don't understand. Okay. They're getting rid of cheeseburgers on the Happy Meal menu. Well, that makes sense, even though it's fucking dumb. I don't get it. I don't get it personally. I I, I mean, if they're trying to be like, okay, kids, it's time to eat healthy, no burgers. You're, you're not you're not allowed to oh, eat and this... unhealthy shit. This Don't. one's another this one's another really small one that just seems kind of pointless to me. And honestly, it's a wording thing that I don't get. Okay. Uh they're going to decide to replace the small french fries that come with the kids meal to kid-sized fries. <laughs> which apparently will decrease the sodium and the calories by half. So so like the the teenage uh 
like fry cooks in the back. What are they gonna do? They're, they're gonna have like a a kid sized portion uh, for the amount of salt yes, that goes just... on the fries. Or oh no, no no no! They're just gonna give them like half the fries they used to. But that doesn't necessarily oh, okay. All right, okay, all right, fair. Here, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I mean, give them less fries. That's healthier. Less shit they're putting in their system. Yeah. But it's already coming with six chicken McNuggets, and God knows how those are made. Yeah, yeah. So, so really, what you're saying, Sam, is what they should be doing is uh, when you when you go up to the counter, you're like, hey, I would like a a, a kid's uh, six piece chicken McNugget meal uh and uh some some juice what they give you is fucking nothing because why would you go to mcdonald's in the first place you unhealthy piece of shit yeah no i i I like that i like that thinking that's that's... you do i I didn't (laughs) expect that (laughs) no what they're doing is dumb it's already unhealthy trying to make it healthier isn't gonna solve any problems well, I mean, it, it, even, you know, even if you try, it doesn't really work like that. Like, um... Yeah. Who is it? Well, uh, Wendy's. Wendy's, okay. their salads, it's been proven they have more calories than their burgers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I've I've heard about this rumor, and I, I think it's just fucking ridiculous. And it's, it's the reason I don't eat fast food. Because it's, it's just it's... extremely unhealthy for you no matter what way you look at it yeah no all all of that stuff you know stick to donair town that's yeah the, stick that's to donair okay. town endorsed don't, by donair town donair town doesn't sponsor us they did not even know we're doing this not Just, yet me and dexter really fucking love donair town yeah it's the fucking um, bomb okay so i'm gonna try to explain this next one the 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 feature story tonight i'm gonna try to explain it as best as i can all right so have you ever heard of the show seen elsewhere uh no it it sounds familiar it's it's a show about the hospital in chicago i want to say okay i could be totally wrong on that Let, let me look at this here uh Boston. It's set in Boston, so All I was right. kind of close. But yeah, kicked off the career of Denzel Washington and whatnot. Howie Mandel got his big break in that show. Okay. So anyways, there's a character in, on the show named Tommy Westfall, right? Right. And he's basically just like, he's the doctor's autistic kid or whatever, right? He's just sort of there for the, for the sentiment, for the sympathy and whatnot, right? Right. So in the show's finale... Uh, it ends with Tommy's dad no longer being a doctor, but actually being a construction worker. Uh, oh. And the very last shot of the series, we have Tommy looking at a snow globe with St. Elsewhere inside of it. And the implication is that this entire show, Uh which ran for a lot of seasons, ran ran for six it ran for five and a half years you know it's a long running show holy shit so basically what this ending implies is that this whole five and a half year show you know that had how many episodes in total 137 fuck apparently it was all made up by some autistic kid it's all part of his imagination (laughs) i I feel like I've heard this before. It, But that's not even the strange part, okay? Okay, what's the strange part? The strange part is when you think about the implications of this. Because it's not, it's not a very normal thing today, but if you go back to the 80s, uh-huh. TV show crossovers were a very regular thing. That is true. Constantly. Yeah, like fucking. Uh, actually, no, I can't. I can't think of anything from the '80s, but I can think of a lot of TV show crossovers, like fucking uh, fairly so odd Elsewhere parents had, and Jimmy Neutron. That's my favorite. Elsewhere had crossovers with stuff like Homicide, Life on the Street, The X Files, Law and Order. Right. So that means that by extension, for example, <laughs> you know how there's like a bajillion Law and Order <laughs> series that have come out over the years. Yeah. Apparently, it was all. 
in the it head was of some all fabricated kid. by an autistic child. Yes, and it goes, it goes so far out there. There's, I'm gonna check out. They've got a master list online because somebody actually put together a list in alphabetical order. Oh of my! All the TV God. shows that were apparently created by this kid as a result of this ending. Wow. These shows wow. include the Adams Family. No, f- okay, Mash. I can see that. I can't see that. Mash, the show about the Korean War. Alf. <laughs> American Horror Story. Through early morning fog I see visions, visions of, of the things, the to, things be. to be. The Arrow pain. apparently was created by this kid. What was created by this kid? This kid apparently created Arrow. Arrow? Uh, the 1960s Batman series with Adam West. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was reading the comics the wrong way. Uh, the Beverly Hillbillies show from the 1960s. Okay, hold on. All of this does sound like something that a child would make up. Like, you got, you got like, the army men thing with M.A.S.H. You got, uh, it's the, the Alf fucking is, like, a. a is he's an alien right yeah he's an alien yeah but uh, then there's some that are just really really weird like okay. better call Saul was apparently part of this kid's master plan oh and that means by extension this kid came up with the entirety of breaking bad <laughs> and then you've got other ones like the brady bunch buffy the vampire slayer oh my god Do how you know- deep does this rabbit hole go Californication. Do you know what that one is? Um, is that one's song? about a sex addict. Yeah. What is this kid coming up with? I don't. I I feel like ugh, I don't even fucking know, dude. I don't know. Community with Chevy Chase and Donald Glover. That's a good one. That is a good one. I this fucking kid... love Donald Glover. Both Cosby shows. <laughs> I don't even know what to make of that one. I don't know I seriously either. don't. Oh. Wait, do you, do you oh. think do you think that also the sex allegations against uh Bill Bill Cosby That's what I was thinking. Where do do you think that know. he also came up with the sex allegations against him or not? You because... know looking at some of the shows on here, it's you know, we know for a fact that this kid was imagining rape scenarios. Yeah, uh, uh, what, what, fucking Law and Order, right? Fucking, there you go. Yeah. Uh, there's some more on here that, some of them kind of make sense, like you got Doctor Who on here, I can see okay, a kid yeah. coming up with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ER, fucking which is magical basically doctor. just seen elsewhere. <laughs> According to this list, both Everybody Loves Raymond and Everybody Hates Chris were, found, <laughs> were created by this kid. <laughs> Okay. All right. I, I love how many of these are just like sitcoms scaring a, scaring a bunch of black people that were just created by this white kid in the 80s when Rachel's tensions were even higher than they are today. <laughs> oh, here's a here's a good one. The okay. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Oh my god. <laughs> the Fresh and Prince Friends. of Bel-Air. And Friends. Friends. And Full House. Oh All created by this kid. Gilligan's fucking island. I have no words. Oh, oh my god, some of these. Um, hmm. What are the other ones here? Because this is just, it's a huge list. There's a bunch I'm not putting in here. Um, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which is a dark, no dark show. No fucking way! How yes, many according to this theory, this... and crossovers are there? Well, some of these, it's connections through fictional products or crossovers with crossovers. Oh, okay. Most of these aren't directly related. All right. But if you, are, if you allow yourself to stretch the theory. Um, King of Queens with Kevin James. No fucking way. Um... Already mentioned Wait, hold that. on. I, I, just like to, I just like to point out that some of these... Some of these, you and I have been saying, oh, no, yeah, I can see how an autistic kid would imagine that. 
Miami Vice, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> this kid thinks up a lot of cop and crime shows. Mr. Ed, which is about a talking horse. I can see how this is the kid with the It's Bojack Horseman. Now, here, here's one. Here's one. I, this one I'd like to I'd like to know what your thoughts are because this one does leave an interesting paradox. Okay. So you know the band The Monkees, right? Daydream Believer and whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the mid '60s, they had a TV show. Okay. And according to this theory, the TV show was all in Tommy Westfall's head. So in the in the universe in Saint Elsewhere, in real life, are the monkeys an actual band, or were they just also created by some autistic kid? Oh fuck. <laughs> oh fuck. Did did this autistic kid create Daydream Believer, and all these classic monkey sounds? <laughs> Okay, Sam. Because I don't think Al- this kid was even alive in the '60s either. Alternate theory, alternate theory, Sam. I, I have, I have a theory that can uh, coincide with this here, this here theory. Um, all right. Yes. Ev- every TV show is an alternate universe, and this autistic kid is God. Yeah. That, that, uh... That's it. That's well, that leaves some more holes though, because. Miami Vice, that starred a guy named Don Johnson, right? Right. After Miami Vice ended, six years later, he got on a show called Nash Bridges. And so now you have the exact same actor playing two characters, both created by Tommy Westfall. Nah, yeah, because cause, uh, if, if each show is an alternate universe, then it's it's the same person, but in a different universe. So how many Tommy it's... Westfall gods are there? Um, there's a lot of Tommy Westfall gods. What are some other ones on here? Seinfeld. This kid came. I was gonna say, could you imagine if Seinfeld was made by an autistic kid? But I, I guess I don't have to say it anymore because it's apparently true. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even know, man. I don't know. uh, Not space operas. Actually, there is space operas. Star Trek, all of Star Trek. Of course, there. of course, of course. All of Star Trek indirectly is a. There, it's all Tommy Westfall. I can see a kid creating Star Trek. Fucking yes. like every single version. Space travel, boom! Every single Star two and Trek. a half men. Two and a half two men. Two and a half men was this kid. Okay, all right. The Walking Dead, all just written by an autistic kid that might explain a lot. Uh yeah. And that leaves another discrepancy, because you know I Love Lucy, right? Uh, vaguely. Well, the show first aired in 1951. Okay. If Sunny Elsewhere took place in the same time that it aired, this kid was born probably about 20 years after I Love Lucy first premiered. So that leaves a lot of holes in my head. He... And a lot of confusion. He created something before he was born? Yeah, according to this thing. Uh, hmm. you want to go over the Oscar nominations so you don't know because you don't know them? Uh, yeah, sure, and then we'll end it. Alright. So, uh, I'm going to read you the Oscar nominations out. Uh, let me just look the okay. suckers up. A lot of them just absolutely... Well, there's a lot of backlash and a lot of controversy because, you know, they're fucking stupid, a lot of them. And, you know, because it's the Oscars. Maybe we just had a fucking stupid year for movies, though. Yeah. Like, All right, so, best picture, the big one. You got Call Me By Your Name. I'm guessing okay. you've never heard of it. No. Darkest Hour. What is? Call Me okay. By Your Name, it's, it's a gay romance movie. That's all I know. Oh, okay. Uh, you got Darkest Hour, which is the Churchill movie. Right. Uh, Dunkirk, which totally deserved uh, it. Dunkirk, of course. Uh, yeah, Dunkirk. Get Out. Mm. Mm-hmm. For Best Picture. Mm. Right. Okay. Lady Bird. What uh, the fuck? Phantom Thread, which is apparently for the fashion industry. Okay, alright. I don't know why that's Best Picture, but alright. The Post. 
the fucking Meryl Streep movie about the news. Okay. No thanks. Uh, you got The Shape of Water, which I've heard is really good, but I have every intention to see it still. Uh, yeah, I've only heard good things about it, so. Yeah, no, it's from the director of Pan's Labyrinth, so I definitely want to check it out at some point. Yeah. Uh, Three Billboards Outside of Missouri is the last one. And, uh, if you haven't heard of that one, it actually sounds pretty interesting. It's got Woody Harrelson in it, so that's another one I probably want to see at okay. some point. All right. Um, and then you got lead actor. Uh, okay, I'm I'm prepared to hear this. Some guy whose name I can't pronounce for Call Me By Your Name. Uh, okay. Daniel Day Lewis for Phantom Thread, which makes sense. It's his last movie, and he's a really popular actor right. at the Academy. Right. Yeah. We got Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out. Okay. Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour, because he played Churchill, so, you know, gotta give him an Oscar. Yeah, and, right. And uh, Denzel Washington for his movie Roman J. Israel Esquire that nobody saw. Roman J. Israel Esquire. Of course you haven't heard of it. I mean, you gotta give Denzel no. credit. And then lead actress, you got Sally Hawkins for The Shape of Water. I've liked her in what I've seen mm-hmm. her, so I'm assuming she does a good job here. Right. You got Frances McDormand for three billboards outside of Missouri. Apparently, she was really good in that. And I mean, she play, she plays an empowered woman. Uh, you yeah. Got Margot fair. Robbie for Suicide Squad. Oh. I kid. I kid. She was nominated, but not for <laughs> Suicide Squad. Oh. That movie did win oh. an Oscar though last year. Are you? It was. It was uh... for makeup. You gotta give them a little credit. It was for makeup. Okay. All right. Like Alright, that's fair. That's fair. Something. Uh, you've got yeah. The, Fuck, dude. That was a terrible movie. You've got the Irish woman whose name I can't pronounce who is in Lady Bird. And okay. then, of course, the Antichrist herself, Meryl Streep for The Pose, which makes a record for most ah, Oscar yes. nominations for one person. Because oh, wow. The really? Fuck. Supporting actor, you've got Willem Dafoe for The Florida Project. I'll only ever see Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin from the first Spider-Man movie. But, like... <laughs> yeah. But I love that guy. I, I'm sure I've seen him in other things, I just can't remember what. You got Woody Harrelson for three billboards. Good. I want to see him get more recognition. Richard Jenkins, who I've never heard of before, for The Shape of Water. Christopher Plummer for all the money in the world. Now, that was interesting because he replaced Kevin Spacey in that, and all his work was done in, like, hastily done reshoots. So you wouldn't expect it to be his oh. best work. Yeah, that's that's real interesting. And then hmm. you got one more stat. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's, like, a pity Oscar. Actually, no. You want? I, I, think, I think it's, like, uh, that it might be, like, an Oscar because, like, given the time that he had... It's pretty fucking good acting, kind of thing. That could be it too, but like, I go with the more political yeah. answer. Um, and then the last okay. one you got is Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards. Again, I haven't seen the movie. There's actually a lot of controversy. Right. I want to know your opinion on this one, because Sam Rockwell won the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor a couple weeks back, and um, uh-huh. the controversy there with that his character he plays is like this incredibly racist cop who like beats up minorities. Okay. And so they didn't think right. he deserved the award because he played a racist cop. Um that I mean no, that doesn't that doesn't make exactly. sense. Why sh- like why shouldn't he get it? You go back to like he years, like Forrest Whitaker won an Oscar as the lead actor for um playing I don't know the guy's name, but he played like this evil dictator from somewhere in Africa. Or was it... No, I don't... It might have been Africa. I don't know, but he played the evil dictator, and he won for that, so there's no controversy there. Director, here's, a, here's an interesting one. Uh, Dunkirk for Christopher Nolan. Get Ooh, Out. Yeah, okay. He's nominated for Best Director. Lady Bird. Okay. Greta Gerwig, it, it's a woman. They have to be direct... Uh, they have to be nominating more women in these kind of categories. 
uh, Phantom Thread, Paul Thomas Anderson. Have you seen Punch Drunk Love? Uh, no. No, I haven't. I, I highly recommend it. It's, it's one of Paul Thomas Anderson's movies. It's the only one of his I've seen. But, uh... Okay. Basically, it's an Adam Sandler comedy, but much, much more realistic. It's really right. good. It's really odd, but I highly recommend it. Uh, okay. And then the last one, of course, you got The Shape of Water, which won the Golden Globe for Best Director, so that might be a good predictor of who oh, wins. Oh, it did. And you got Best Animated Feature. That might be interesting. Uh, Ooh. Boss Baby. Not a joke yeah, you, well, Sam, you were right. It is definitely interesting, <laughs> though it, I, I am... Uh... <laughs> you know what? It's, it's, it's only... You know what? Crucify me. I saw Boss Baby in the theater, and I enjoyed it. So. Actually, fucking, it's not the Emoji movie. Uh, uh, the Breadwinner, which is about um, Malala Yousafzai, I think. The activist who survived being shot, which is pretty impressive. Coco, right. of course, you got the one Pixar movie. Okay, that's, that's, I've, okay, I didn't see Coco. I didn't even know it was a thing uh, until I started seeing ads for it on my phone. But the thing is, and this is a real quick anecdote, uh, you know, like, how the, the logo for Coco is, like, all the letters are different colors, right? Yeah. Uh, the last O in Coco is light blue, yet every single fucking advertisement I saw it on had a light blue background. And since I didn't know it was a movie or I didn't know anything about it, whenever I would, like... Uh, hear about it or like see an ad for it and just look at it as at a glance without like paying attention I just thought it said cock <laughs> like C-O-C and I'm like what the fuck is this I, I knew that one was coming and then, I knew that was, was coming like did did that ever happen to you or was it just I me I haven't seen any advertisements for that with the light blue background okay alright Every single advertisement I saw for it had a light blue background. I was freaking out. Like, why did they do that? But, I, like, it probably was just me only finding light blue background fucking advertisements. Yo, man, what the fuck? You start making porn again? <laughs> okay, so the last two is, uh... This, this one's definitely memorific. You've got Ferdinand, which is about... John Cena playing a bull. <laughs> Nominated for an Oscar. Okay. And That's the fucking last, hilarious. I love that. The last one is Loving Vincent, which I believe is about Van Gogh. Again, something nobody saw. Yeah, and no. Then, uh, no, nobody saw it. <laughs> Just looking at this. Okay. Let's see which ones are still worth talking about here. Adapted screenplay. This is always an interesting one. I, I want to be a writer. That's my goal. So these screenplay nominations right. always interest me. Uh, Call Me By Your Name, which I talked about earlier. Uh, I'm sure it's a good movie. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard good things. The Disaster Artist, which just right. pisses me off. Because if you're like yeah. me and you've read the okay. book, that screenplay. Basically <laughs> what they did. Have you read the book? I'm missing on no. Okay, there's some. There's a book. Yes, it's based on a book. In fact, I actually, oh the guy, the guy who introduced, it's the author of the book, Greg Sinclair, who played Mark. He wrote the book, right? The guy right. who introduced him to James Franco is a guy named Mike Rush. He used to manage the Rio, and I actually met him, and okay. I didn't know this story about him until oh, he pulled shit. it to my face. Oh my God! He okay. He casually mentioned it. Well, uh, well, we were on set for Twin Pool. Plug, plug, go check out Twin Pool. But, like, yeah, he just casually oh, mentioned it to us. And I love, because when he was telling us this story, this was, like, a couple of days after the whole allegations with uh, James Franco came out. So he's telling right. us this story, but he was peppering it with jokes about, like, you know, I was walking James Franco through the lobby, and I had to pull him away from all the teenage girls that were trying to get his autograph, because they knew bad <laughs> things were going to happen. <laughs> Oh man, okay, oh, all right. Yeah, but that, that was funny. He, he's a nice guy. But, um, yeah, the problem he with that like a nice is guy. the book has some really interesting stories. Like, really fascinating how strange they are. 
and the screenplay takes them and just completely replaces them with like cliches and all this horrible shit. Um, like for just, example, just like turning turning it into a meme, basically. That's exactly what they did at one point. That's the example I wanted to make. So, um, have you seen the movie? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Okay, yeah, it, it's a good. Everything about the movie is really good except the screenplay. But um, okay, so there's a scene in the book, you know, an actual thing that happened where um, the guy that plays Mark and Tommy was so they're hanging out, they're driving late at night, they're in LA or something, just speeding down the highway. It's like three in the morning, and um, uh huh. Greg Sestero, he's trying to stay awake, so he puts on a Van Halen record because he's driving, right? Or a CD or whatever. Right. And the song Dreams by Van mm-hmm. Halen comes up, right? Yeah. And Tommy Russo has been sleeping up to this point. But when he hears the song, he wakes up. And he tries to sing along with the CD. But he gets every single uh. lyric wrong. <laughs> so there's potential for a really funny joke in here, right? Yeah, that's fucking amazing. What do they do in the movie? They replaced it with the two of them saying Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. Oh. Uh. that That's my problem with the movie. There's too much bullshit like that where they took genuinely quirky situations and just made it so common denominator. It's turned it into uh, so a the fucking one, meme. Uh, this, this one's surprising. Logan is nominated for uh, adapted screenplay. I haven't seen okay. it, so I can't All take right. it. Uh, Molly's Game, which is an Aaron Sorkin screenplay, so of course it got nominated. And then again, this Mud okay. movie you know, I haven't heard of. Right. And then we got original screenplay. Uh, the Big Stick, which again, something I've heard good things about. Get Out. Right. You Again, I already know our why, why is it nominated for so many things? Because it fits an agenda. I mean, it's essentially reverse racism, but, like, it fits the agenda of the year. Uh, Lady Bird. Again, a, a film written by a woman about a woman. You've got The Shape of Water. I'm assuming that one's deserved. And okay. And, again, three billboards outside of Missouri. Which, the premise of that one I find really interesting. So, I, I think, you know, that had a good story. So, it must have had a good screenplay, I'm assuming. Star Wars The Last Jedi. Actually, that's the one last thing what? we can talk about right now. Forget about the Oscars. Oh, yeah, okay. I finally watched yeah. I finally watched The Last Jedi on Friday night. So, we can talk about okay. it. Okay, how was it? Yeah, and then, and then I, I can finally it. go. I feel like, movie. objectively, it was a really bad movie. But at the same time, yeah. I really enjoyed myself watching it. Like, I feel yeah, like okay. I enjoyed that's, that's the film fair. the same way that a lot of people enjoy the room. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go into spoilers here because the movie's been out for two months. I have yeah, it's, seen... it's been out for long enough. This is your spoiler warning, okay? For, every, for anyone who hasn't seen it, skip to... I don't know, whatever. This is the end, so... Yeah, just stop watching. If you haven't seen it, then bye. (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, the scene, the very first scene with Luke Skywalker in the film, Ray hands him the lightsaber. Everything that the Force Awakens is building up to. He fucking throws it behind his shoulder. I pissed laughing in the theater. Yeah. Like, literally, (laughs) I almost fell out of my seat. And this was in, like, a half full theater, so I don't know how I get kicked out. But that, I fucking lost it. Oh. oh my fucking god! I could barely remember anything about it because I I watched it like a week after it came out or something, yeah, no, I remember and that. like I just I did not like it to the point where I w- like I I tried to forget about it kind of thing. There's a lot of things in like, there that didn't logically make any sense, but on an emotional level, I like them. Like um, Finn's whole side story with that Asian chick. It's completely oh, yeah. hopeless. That's the thing a lot of people are pointing out online. Yeah. But I like the character. It's, there's no point. I liked, I liked watching yeah. the journey. No. I agree, it was totally pointless. That's, that's, 
yeah, that's that's like the fucking stupidest part of it is that so much of that movie, because of how many like twists and turns there were in the plot, so much of it was just like fucking completely pointless and it became like a three hour long film that could have been one hour. Yeah, no, there is <laughs> there is one storyline that I thought was really pointless and did kind of piss me off in the theater. There was no was fucking point in having Leia end up in like a crypto chamber wherever the fuck they put her in. And getting that new yeah. admiral in. And like the whole, the yeah. whole story. No, there was no point. Needing to learn control and shit. That was, it was pointless. It was boring. It was a waste of my time. Yeah, like every, every scene where it was like Poe trying to get his power back. Uh, or, like, just part of that side story within, like, the three different fucking side stories going on in this movie. I was just like, this is fucking boring. You have the actress from Jurassic Park, too. I, I really like her. I like her work. And she did a fine job in the film, but her character just... Pointless, her character annoying, sucked. Not a clear motivation. Like, is she evil or is she not? What's the point in that drama? Well, because it was supposed to appear like she was, like, the, an antagonistic character, but then in the end, oh, shit, she's good, oh, my God, oh, don't you care about her now, she was trying to be good the whole time, no, I no, I don't. Up. And, uh, what do you think about the whole yeah. Jedi logic thing? So they brought in, like, these really interesting concepts to the mythos that logically made absolutely no fucking sense, but they were cool. Um, uh... I, I'm not in t like was was it the whole like balance thing where like the force will automatically balance out? No, no, no. I'm like, talking like so like, like there wasn't Kylo Ren stuff where they can like fucking hear each other and see each other and shit. Oh, from, like, that I I don't know. I don't know enough about the Star Wars like lore because there's like fuck loads of comics and shit where apparently like there are different things you can do with the force that like people who just watch the movies don't even know about like did you know that there are some jedi who were banned from like the jedi council because uh they had they they um like learned the ability to create a large amount of area like using the force that was in zero gravity and then also using the force they would whip shit around in a frictionless environment to fucking murder people so that's not okay, but Obi Wan cuts the head uh, guy's head off, and oh, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it up. Speaking of speaking of stupid people getting cut up, Snoke was really weak. Okay, here's the thing with Snoke. When I first saw him in the film, I was like, he's gonna die. I don't know how or why, but he's gonna die before this film is over. What was the point? Did I just they know. him up so much in the Force Awakens, and also. Oh, he's just like six feet tall. He's got a baby's head way too big for his body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, know. that was just. He's... There was no point to his character. And then. He... There, there were a lot of characters that were introduced that just had no point. And characters. Like, like. Unintroduced Snoke. that had no point. Luke dying at the end made no sense. No, it didn't. It really didn't. Unless you're going off of the thing that I said earlier about, like, the Force automatically balancing itself, and then, like, oh, Rey is now a good Jedi, lol. Okay, well, don't need Luke, bye. Yeah, like, emotionally, it's, like, it's beautiful, it's a nice send-off, but at the same time, like, even, even Mark Hamill himself was like, yeah, I, I, I thought that was pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, 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 I love Mark Hamill. He's a great guy. I don't know, man, it, yeah. The more I think about it, it's like the it's like Kingsman the Golden Circle. The more I think about it, the more I realize how just fundamentally wrong it was. Yeah, yeah, no, that the fucking it'll do that to you. Yeah. Well, I should stop analyzing everything. It, well, yeah, I don't think there's anything yeah. else to add. That's, that's the podcast. I mean, there's podcast. plenty of shit to add. There's, there's plenty of shit to add to the Star Wars rant, but, like, we don't have time. Yeah. Alrighty, then. 